Right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Praveen uh, Bhagwatula. I'm a part of the engineering uh, organization at Cisco that work on Sonic, and I'm uh, also a member of the Sonic TSC uh, community. I'm joined here by Patrice and Mike, uh, colleagues um, working on Sonic. So um, as Dave had mentioned the, uh, you know, in his intro, um, you know, Sonic did start from uh, a use case within the data center fabric, and now it's getting expanded to many more use cases. Um, and as part of the community, and specifically as part of the Sonic Routing Working Group, um, we are also exploring use cases which are more um, routing heavy and route, uh, focus a lot more on um, edi having additional routing capabilities in Sonic. Um, so today, as we were exploring, we are going to talk about a few of these, uh, specifically three uh, of the use cases or three of the features um, that are pretty critical as we start to look at Sonic uh, being deployed in routing heavy use cases. One is the uh, prefix independent convergence with BGP, uh, and then uh, how do we do the uh, the multi-homing, especially with VXLAN. Uh, and then the third one is, you know, how do we add the VXLAN VTAP? So a lot of these are um, driven from the community through a lot of collaboration across many, uh, across many uh, uh, participants. Um, so Patrice and Mike are going to um, drive uh, this, this, this discussion today. Thank you. Is it working? Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, so let's start with BGP PIC. Um, so the Sonic Routing Work Group has done a lot of conversation and meetings about that topic. Um, so actually, I found that slides uh, in my uh, old deck, and I find it quite interesting. Because, you know, like, what, what is BGP PIC is for is to exactly fix that, <laughs> basically, right? Whenever you get loss of connectivity or you get an, a network outage, it will affect whatever you're running on your network. And I just hear some examples are quite old, but I, I find it pretty cool to show you that. So you can see now we are more aiming towards that 50 millisecond switch, uh, millisecond, uh, switch time, but you still have protocols that can survive up to a minute. So anyway. All right, so what is BGP PIC? It's for the uh, prefix independent, uh, independent convergence. So, um, so basically, without PIC, and I think people have experienced that with the Sonic, uh, you will see on the graph the, uh, the, the red line where um, it depends on how many routes you're gonna try to reprogram whatever it is an, out, it is an outage on your network. And as you can see, uh, it can grow pretty fast, all right? Um, so if you have PIC, it means that we have already pre-configured uh, goodies in your hardware, so whenever failure is happening, uh, you should not see much difference, right? It should just be like, like quick like that. So what, do, what are we, work, what are we uh, talking about in those work groups? Is, um, is, to, is to be able to lay down that type of structure shown at the, uh, in this page where basically everything has a, um, um, sorry, an, an indirection in your database. So you can see that you can take a lot of BGP entries and they are all pointing to few next up, right? Which is your, the first, uh, well, the, the one in, in light blue. And these one will get recursion over your IGP. So therefore, at any point of time, if this is failure on your network, I don't need to re-download all the BGB routes in my hardware. What I want to achieve is just touch which one is getting affected, and, I, and you switch that in the hardware without the need of re-downloading, I don't know, one million route, the test that AD has done, right? I think. <laughs> Thanks, AD. So basically here, let's look at the two example, right? There's a few more examples, but this, these are the main ones, so we have Pick edge on the left and pick core on the right. So pick edge, what it means really is your edge device will get affected at two levels, at the, at the BGP level and at the IGP level. But since we program those level of indirection straight from the hardware, I can switch my, sorry, I'm, not, I'm sorry, here we go. <laughs> I can switch the BGP path list from the best to the backup right away and that will get downloaded directly to your hardware without we downloading all the BGP routes that say I'm pointing to that next subgroup object. We call it the next subgroup object. 
So because my next subgroup is already pre-programmed, I don't need to re-download the fact that those 1 million rows of uh, it is routes are pointing to <laughs> that next subgroup. So this will not happen, making your convergence super fast. Same thing with your IGP. So if my IGP is getting affected as well, then I just need to touch the next subgroup of the first IGP block. So the content of it. So but all the pointers between your routes and your object remains the same. So again, it's, it's pretty fast. On the core side, it works exactly the same, but actually it's quite boring because you just need to touch your IGP. So, so the edge is a bit more sensitive because you will touch the IGP and the BGP, the development direction, whereas for the core, it's only your IGP. And you're pretty much done. Now, what are the work items? Well, first of all, one thing to mention, well, actually, there's a lot of collaborators here. Collaboration across Alibaba, Acton, uh, Broadcom, NVIDIA, NTT, Sixman. I hope I'm not missing anybody because there's a lot of people working on this. That's why there's a three dots, so I apologize for the, the people that I miss, if any, okay? I, it, it is not my intent at all. But also, as you can see here from the skeleton of, the, uh, of that drawing here on the left side, the, the pick is really um, a next subgroup that you're programming, but it's, the, the whole idea is from top to bottom. It starts in your rib and goes down up to inside Sonic, inside your ABDD, and inside it all, every down to the side and to the hardware. If at any point of time somebody is flattening whatever you're doing, it's not pick anymore. Because then you will need to re-download each angle update again one more time for the part that you have flattened. There's somebody also that say, hey, we have a good idea. We're going to start it in BGP. No, you cannot do that. <laughs> okay. I'll repeat that because with BGP, if you start to put your next subgroup from them, well, you're skipping your rib functionality. So what happens whenever you have a tie break to make between protocols? It will not work. So you can optimize BGP to rib. I'm 100% fine with that. But starting from the rib, rib will give you a next subgroup, and, it needs to, and all those levels of indirection needs to get down up to the hardware. And please do not flatten anything anywhere. <laughs> it will not work. It's not big, OK? So, so that's the first item. We are spending a lot of time. Uh, there's, a, there's a call for action here, because Listen, guys, if we want to get that in, and the number of collaborator or cal uh, of company that we have on this project, it's quite um, demanding, right? So I need, we need the work from everybody, so we need to get serious at it. We need to work all together, but it's going to take time if we wait for every, if everyone waits for everyone, it will never happen. So we need to make progress if we want to get that done one day. Oh, just one thing also. Uh, as part of this as well, I didn't go in the details of all these modules because you will find out there's a lot of HLDs there. Everyone has a stake at it, so you can go, um, you can go back to that slide and you can look at what's going on there. Second part we are working a lot on is VX non multi homing So we're super excited to be working with the community to extend the existing VXLAN support from single homing to multi homing. So, you know, taking out legacy protocols like MC lag, you know, providing all active redundancy into the network, you know, and building on top of what's already there and, and uh, bringing that to the wider community. So today, you know, there's a lot of support in the FRR routing stack for eVPN multi-homing. You can find the topo tests there and you can start poking around and seeing how all of it works. But today in Sonic, we're, you know, we support single homing. Multi homing is, uh, you know, where we need to fill in all the infrastructure to bring that from FRR down to the um, down to the hardware. You know, the so what we're as part of what we're bringing for for multi homing, you know, providing uh, providing additional redundancy to the hosts. In this particular example, you know, we have. Uh, two different subnets, all in the same VRF, and we're also providing subnet stretch in layer three across multiple uh, Tor devices. So you can see, you know, there's the 45 subnet in green. We've got the 20 subnet in orange. 
to, and especially with the, um, across all of those, the host could be anywhere. So we need to be able to find, find that when the subnet is advertised from all of them. Basically, with the VX10 it's roaming, what's going to happen is once we enable this, mm -hmm. you're going to get full fabric, DC fabric enablement. So that's going to work L2, L3, mix yes. it up. Mobility, all use cases will be supported. Yeah. All right, so another thing is also that we, I didn't put an HLD yet, but it's already written. It's going to be public soon. <laughs> it's about the L3 side. So the, the picture show you the uh, L2 multi roaming on the left, L3 on the right side. Basically, we have use cases that instead of having the, um, the L2 interface, the bridge, the L2 VNI, that part, the whole green part, we take it out with the SVI. And then what we do is we take L3 interface that we can extract to the Verve. Now, if you do all active multi roaming again, well, you still need to do your ARP, ARP and ND cache synchronization. Mm -hmm. This is why I still have synchronization on, on the right side. Um, there's good use case, Eddie has one. Uh, there's many people who has one. <laughs> so, um, but no, uh, actually, but, but this one, the, the, the L3 side is a little bit more challenging, it's, for in, it's more involved because you, have, you still need to advertise Reptite 2, but f not from the L2 VNI, but from the L3 VNI side. So people who are pretty good on FR will know that, dude, you're gonna do that? Yes, we will be able to. So that's what we are doing. Uh, so it's basically the fabric without L2 right now. That's, you can see it that way, okay? So L3, will, you will hear it very soon, Eddie, and that for good, okay? All right, even though, so. Well, as some of the uh, you know, new data flows that are coming in, the data is already there in FRR, but we need to now pull it all the way down into ASIC DB. So first one is for a split horizon table. We need to be able to filter uh, traffic coming from the, the host or any uh, bomb traffic, broadcast, unknown unicast, multicast. We need to be able to filter that, that way it doesn't actually end up going back to the host again through a different tour. So the information is received from BGP through Zebra, passed along to FPM SyncD, pushing that, those updates into the Split Horizon table in AppDB through Split Horizon Orchestrator, which is gonna be a new, com new module, and eventually ending up in ASICDB and the hardware. We are also you know, building this with BGP Pick in mind for all the next top group updates as well. You know, similar to what's been done for PIC, BGP is gonna send the information about the routes to Zebra, the RIB, to create and manage all the next top groups and program them both through the Linux kernel for slow path support and through, um, and through um, FPM SyncD for uh, the hardware. The, the entire complexity on that, to be honest, guys, is with local bias and the split horizon filtering. So, and this is why we have, like, uh, yeah. if you look at the next slide, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of new database and um, tables and modules yeah. that we are building because whenever you de need to do local bias, you need to use a VTAPs to program, <laughs> you need to use the split horizon. <laughs> He's laughing, but I'm sure he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> there's a lot to this. I'm laughing at the <laughs> I do, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my. Uh, <laughs> is it your lap? No. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, uh, so there's a lot of new database, new orchestrator that we need to pull in there. It's again because of the complexity of layer two and uh, local bias, split horizon. Okay, so I think that's where it stands for, and my family time will be later today. <laughs> so uh, one last thing I also want to mention, there's a huge collaboration done right now with Broadcom, so thanks to those guys, they are also uh, on this. So basically right now, if you look and you do some uh, on the research in the Sonic repo, you will see two HLD, okay, one from Cisco, one from Broadcom. Don't worry, we're working together, so we're gonna be opening a third PR with the two HLD merged together, and uh, hopefully that's gonna solve the whole, uh, the whole confusion now. Yeah. All right, cool, all right, B6. Awesome. Yeah, so a third item today that we're excited to be introducing is support for IPv6 VTEPs uh, across Sonic, Sonic and FRR actually. So today, uh, as part of the initial VXLine single homing support, uh, there's only v4 uh, vtap addresses that were enabled so we're now extending that to provide full v6 across you know peering underlay and overlay services 
Uh, we're also excited that this is bringing in you know, support for V4 over V6 overlays. So you know, we can have mixed data centers and provide interop with more legacy services. And we'll be bringing this for all of the existing EVPN, uh, the major route types supported in uh, FRR, route types one through five. And it's not really gonna change very much from an architectural perspective, but you know, we can now run PIC with full V6. So you know, our hosts could be V4, they could be V6, pointing to the same BGP next hop group, which, is, which just has V6 VTEP addresses, which then points to your IGP, can also be full V6, and to the actual, uh, to the eventual outgoing interfaces, which are also V6 link local. Actually, Mike, mm -hmm. I have one thing to ask for people. Next time you're doing your code, can you support V4, V6 from scratch? <laughs> so we yeah. don't need to do that work. <laughs> so that's gonna help us a lot, honestly. Uh, yeah. It should just be natural, honestly. <laughs> so please, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And you know, on the same train that there's not really much changing architecturally, everything, you know, event flow remains the same, be it your L2 hosts, your L3 routes, the programming path stays exactly the same. It's just a matter of, you know, instead of everywhere there is a V4 VTEP, it now becomes an IPv6 address. So please keep that in mind in your databases as well. And, you know, finally, there's not really, there's a couple small changes here and there within, you know, FPM Sync D to look at the, the, um, the right kernel attributes for, um, for the V6 uh, next hop via, through the RTA via message, or attribute, sorry. Uh, supporting IPv6 next hops for EVPN routes, and then, and then FDB SyncD for V6 next hops for Mac and inclusive multicast uh, routes. Otherwise, there's no changes to Psi, nothing for architecture. Um, we're in the process right now of, uh, we have presented to the FRR community last week, and we got a very warm reception there, which we're very excited about. Um, and I think uh, towards the end of May, there's going to be, we'll be presenting the public changes to, for V6 support across the VXLAN uh, HLDs. And this, this, up, this is currently being targeted, we're hoping for the 2024-11 uh, release. To, that way everyone can start playing around with it. And, you know, we're happy to see where it goes from there. Any question? <laughs> So that was what all I had, and I think except for the BGP pick, and you already mentioned about the VTEP, and I believe even the multi-homing is something yeah. they're trying to get into the 2024-11 release, yeah. and, the, and uh, as uh, Patrice mentioned, the BGP pick definitely leads a lot more collaboration in the community, and we'll hopefully also get that to one of the releases pretty soon. Right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, any questions? No questions? So I can ask you. Mm -hmm. So is it going to be compatible with RFCs or is it like something that 100%. Yep. 100% RFC yeah. compliance. What's exactly. that? Exactly. 7432 and which ones? 7432, oh, yeah. 7432, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's for sure. No, well, this one is the, yes. <laughs> That's the basic yeah. one. But and, uh, actually, any other draft, like workroom draft also, mm -hmm. or any other RFC will be fully compliant. Why V6, VXNAN, and SRV6? What is the question? <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, it, it'll be useful for SRV6 as well for any IPv6 underlay. Yeah. Yeah. I think the underlay part is definitely reusable. The overlay, I believe, we'll have to have the options for both v, VXLAN yeah. and SRV6 for different deployments yeah. and design chances. But also, if you're bringing SRV6, the whole multi homing aspect is slightly different. It's a different beast. <laughs> so we need to, now we are, mm -hmm. I think like the, honestly, the community was quite excited about the museuming for VXTAN. Mm -hmm. So let's get them excited on that one first. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. And if anybody wants the trick for the family time, just schedule the time in your schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so you have some personal work, some personal time yeah. at home. <laughs> yeah. All right, anything else? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.